Over a hundred years ago, George Henry Moore arrived in New Zealand seeking to build himself a feudal estate. He prospered. His sheep station, Glenmark, covered all the land between two North Canterbury rivers, and a hundred shearers working side by side clipped the huge flocks. The pet dogs died. The great house burned. Of George Henry Moore's castle, only the stonework remains. Glenmark is no longer a vast estate of boundary riders, blacksmiths and household servants. Most of the native tussock has been replaced by new grass, the station divided amongst many families. The orderly pattern of farming varies little over the rich pastures, and the land seems quiet, undramatic and unchanging. It's the rain that has brought slow change, and some farmers look upon the 26-inch rainfall as a mixed blessing. The annual rainfall is low, but once or twice each year a concentrated five inches is to be expected the floods throwing soil and shingle over much of the best flat land. Flooded roads isolate farms for days or force detours over deeply silted paddocks. Waterborne rubbish from the whole area always finished up on the lowest properties, and every year it was getting worse. Realising that if this kept up there might no longer be a workable farm down here, one farmer, Harold Simmons, decided to seek help. He invited neighbours on the same catchment and soil conservation officers to meet on his property and help save the land. Every year more shingle charged down from the hills, tearing open new gullies and enlarging stream beds. The rich soil which made George Henry Moore's fortune is buried and useless under infertile debris and shingle. The rubbish must have come from somewhere. More people are concerned than just the few troubled ones on the lower properties. Going one boundary further up and climbing deeply cut gullies reveals obvious damage. A soil conservator points out some causes of erosion, such as overgrazing of tussock country. On the highest farm is the worst desolation of the whole area. Up here, scarred land has been crumbling and wasting away, washing down with every heavy rain. On these steep faces, water runoff is too fast, especially where overgrazed tussock has become too sparse to absorb water or hold the soil. So down from the top farms have gone soil and shingle-laden water to rush through the gullies and undercut the stream banks. Reaching the flats, all the debris was dumped on the lower farms. After Soil Conservation's Glenmark survey, the worried farmers called a meeting. What had started as Harold Simmons' problem really involved all eight farms making up one catchment area a 3,000-acre part of Old Glenmark where rain drains across all their properties. The only way the lower properties could be fully protected was to attack the cores and slow down water runoff over the whole catchment. Adoption of a cooperative scheme to be managed by these farmers was moved by Ted Adlington. Scientific advice and help was to be given by soil conservation. The plan was approved unanimously by the meeting. From the survey, they broke the catchment up into three sections, the hilltops, the rolling slopes, and the flats. Glenmark was to be rebuilt. The land's defense against flood, planned to take five years, started within a few days with action in the hills.
Overgrazed hill country responds to aerial oversowing of grasses and top dressing with fertilizer. A landing strip on the farm makes this the cheapest and most successful method of working large inaccessible areas. Country exhausted from overgrazing is now rested from stock behind conservation fencing until new growth can guard the soil. Over 30 acres of young trees are planted to take hold on dangerously eroded hillsides and gullies. Poplar poles go in all along the main watercourse. In the gullies and stream bed, many thousands of poles stand to guard the soil. Their massed roots will soon form a protective mat, supporting new vegetation and holding the banks against earth sluicing water. Many stock ponds of various types and on different levels are bulldozed out on the eight Glenmark farms. During rains, they'll reduce flow of water, holding it for stock to get full benefit in the dry season. Soil conservation skills combined with farmers' muscle and machinery defend the land against attack by uncontrolled water. Careful survey work marks out the rolling country for contouring. Graded terraces, contour banks and pasture furrows have been recommended by the soil conservation officers for the various slopes. Contouring is inexpensive to make and maintain and the water holding qualities are effective immediately. Graded terraces and banks along the contour are constructed at wide intervals on the more gentle slopes. On steeper permanent pasture, single furrows will slow down travelling water, diverting it along the contour until it is absorbed. The main work is finished. Conservators and farmers wait anxiously for the first big rain to test the land's new defences. The North Canterbury Catchment Board advises that there's been heavy rain in the Selwyn Catchment. It's anticipated that flooding will occur in the lower reaches of the river within the next few hours. The time is 26 minutes to one. The rain started on a Sunday and kept pouring until Wednesday with a recorded five inches. More than enough to produce flood conditions. But 40 miles south of Glenmark in Christchurch, the rain is merely a nuisance spoiling the city's weekend. After three worried days at Glenmark, Harry D.L. finds that the upper stream is still flowing quietly. The new hill work is holding the rain, and this time he'll not be isolated for a week by flood. He goes to tell the good news to his friends below. Another farmer on the rolling hills, Jock Carson, says the flow off his land looks quite different this time. It's clear water, carrying no soil. Down on the flat, Harold Simmons says it was two days before the waterway through his place flowed at all. The party lines are busy. A message goes to Christchurch too, telling the waiting soil conservators that the peak flow won't be long. On the way out, flooding on a larger neighbouring catchment looks serious with the river overflowing onto roadside paddocks. But things are different at Glenmark. The ford, recently impassable at each flood, carries only one inch of water. Palisades of poplars have taken root, and thanks to them, there's no sign of scarring out either of the gullies or of the stream banks.
discharging water evenly to storage ponds on each level, all regulating dams work efficiently. The ponds have filled but have not overloaded because of the slow, regular arrival of water. Contour banks and pasture furrows hold the rain falling on the lower hills. Before, slopes dried out quickly, while some of the flats became too wet for winter grazing. Now that all water is absorbed to grow more grass, the flats below will be grazed the year round. The new Glenmark is a complete success. Planned to take five years, work has been completed in just over three. The total cost is £4,000, half contributed by the eight farmers and half subsidised by the Soil Conservation and Rivers Control Council. Neighbours, after seeing the improved fertility on these farms, have now grouped together in similar schemes and fresh furrows are starting to band surrounding hills to help put an end to the threat of floods. Management has improved on every property, and after conservation work, Jock Carson has doubled his number of sheep. He also grazes cattle, an extra since the job started. The debris-strewn lower paddocks on Harold Simmons Place are now being worked for the first time in 40 years. His appeal for help with such problems three years back has brought positive results to all eight farmers. 400 extra sheep and stud stock are run by Harry D.L. since his slopes have been stabilised. Steve Uren has 50 acres in crops never carried before. Three years back he grazed a thousand sheep. Now he's been able to increase his flock to 1,500. Not one of the farmers could have made such progress working alone. On the rolling foothills of North Canterbury, a pattern of proved success is spreading out from Glenmark.